In today's Madden 21 YouTube video, we're going to be breaking down a very, very in-depth tutorial on everything you need to know about defense in Madden NFL 21. Now, specifically, the thing that we're going to focus in on is how do you adjust to your opponent's tendencies? How do you adjust to what they're doing? How do you take away things? What are the tools in your tool belt that you might not even know that you have uh, on the defensive side of the ball? So we're going to jump right into that video. But before we do, I want to let you know that if you've never been to my channel, my name's Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time today to watch this video. Now, I hope this video helps you. If this video does not help you, please send me a text message. My number is 812-216-3644 with your specific Madden question, and I'd love to be able to help you improve in this game. Now, again, the whole goal of my channel here is to help you guys get better, to teach the game, to um, just share information with you um, that you can apply to your own game that can really really help you uh, be able just to do um, a better job either on the defensive side of the ball or on the offensive side of the ball and really get into the um, underlying things that really Madden has to offer and so um, we're going to dive deep into the defensive side of the ball today so strap in um, if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and click subscribe if you haven't joined the text message membership it's a great way to get better. We release videos kind of like this one, but a little bit more in depth, a little bit more in detail, and a little bit more specific uh, videos. Um, like we did an entire gun bunch offensive guide in our text message membership for free. So if you want to pick that up, all you have to do is send me a text message. My number is in the description. I'll just give it to you right here as well. It's 812 216 3644. Just send me a shoot me a text. Let me know what's up and we can get you those videos. Now, uh, let's talk about this. So I'm going to just go against what I believe to be one of the best uh, offenses in Madden 21 right now, and that's the gun bunch. So with the flood concept, you have mesh post, you have smash return, PA dig fork, and then obviously double post. Now we've got Brady just primarily so we can use um, Hot Route Master, just so I can show you kind of the the – the tool, the, the tool belt that you have on the defense side of the ball. Now, real quick, I want to explain a couple things. And we're going to primarily spend most of the time out of nickel 3 through 5 or big nickel over G. And the primary reason for that is because these are the two, in my opinion, best formations in the game to be able to adjust out of. Nickel 3 through 5 wide is a close third, but I would recommend nickel 3 through 5 over that. Um, nickel 3 through 5 is more of a run defense and blitzing formation, in my opinion. Um, if you, if, but it, it does fine, but I, I would rather have either 3 through 5 or Big Nickel over G. Now, first and foremost, coaching adjustments. Um, auto. I want to explain this really quickly. What does auto flip mean? Auto flip means that your formation is specifically designed to stop strong right formations as a general rule. What that means is if you take a look at my um, formation here at the screen, what you'll notice is that Nickel, th you see that the slot corner is on the left side you see that in every formation the slot corner is on the left side what that nickel formation is anticipating is that you're going to be facing like a gun doubles where the tight end is on the right side of the screen and the slot receiver is on the left side of the screen if for example they might flip that right so they may come out in um, gun doubles flipped the auto flip will automatically flip your defense to match the strength of the offense that's what that basically means okay and there's pros and cons to having it on. As a general piece of advice that I'm going to give you, if you are blitzing in this year's game, you might not want to have it on. But for the advanced players, and I personally actually have been playing with this on, as you can see from the description, the CPU will flip your defensive play to best match the offensive formation. Now, some people would rather just flip the play themselves because of some alignment issues that this might cause. Personally, I like to just put it on. It saves me an adjustment at the line of scrimmage. Auto alignment. Um, defenders will align according to their default alignment rules. Okay, so what that means is when they come out in a if you come out in a play, the way the computer would align is going to be the default. If you put it to base alignment, what that means is they will come out and align themselves specifically to the strength of the formation from the auto flip. So exactly how this looks right here, exactly how this play looks right here, four four. That's exactly how they're going to line up. If you, and the reason this matters is if you're a blitzing guy, most blitzes work better with base alignment. Okay? So I actually like to run with baseline on and auto flip on. Some people, especially people that play a little bit more coverage, will play man aligned. And the primary reason is because this is going to essentially place your corners directly over the, um, the offensive players so that you can always threaten man coverage at them, okay? 
Um, but those are the three options there. I like base align. And then if I want to go to man align or if I want to have that look, then I'll just unbase align or I will man align by hitting one with my adjustments. But typically, I like to come out and be in a base align just so I know what I'm getting on the defensive side of the ball. Ball in air defense. AI players will play ball, play based on their ball in the air trait. What that means is, and all the players in the game have traits, right? Some, some of their traits might be that they play receiver in these two-man catch animations. Some would be that they swat the ball in these two-man catch situations. Some would be that they play the ball, right? I would recommend that you have this on um, either play receiver or swat ball. And then if you want to try to pick the ball, I would go ahead and click on to the corner and do it yourself. But as a general rule, you could also leave this to play ball. All of these are fine. I've actually really liked the um, swat ball or the play receiver mechanic. Um, just because if I get burned over the top, sometimes the click on is a little bit bad and you won't be able to, you know, you might not be able to get there. But if you have it like this, then the computer can basically automatically know to knock the ball out. Quarterback matchups. Um, this is kind of weird. I would stay away from this for the most part unless you're playing man coverage for the majority of your screen. Um, but overall, I would just run balanced here. If you don't do, if you don't run balanced, what it will do is it will move your corners and it will mess up your zones and adjustments. So I would, as a general rule, be balanced on this uh, on this tab. Option defense. 99.9% .9 of the time you want this on conservative. If you take a look at the um, description here, pro is, uh, it focuses on the quarterback on the option. The con is the dive and the pitch are always open on the option. So if someone's running triple option on you and you run this on conservative, they will always be able to hit the pitch out of the triple option. Most people don't run triple option. Most people run read option. Read option, this is what you want definitely on conservative, okay? Strip ball, um, there, I have actually wondered about putting this on aggressive, but if you notice the con, um, you have a higher chance of broken tackles and you have a higher chance of face mask penalties. And from what my research has been on this, if this is on aggressive, you are going to get a minimum of at least two face mask penalties per half, which can be kill for, killer. So I just leave this on uh, balanced. Tackling, um, I've tried aggressive and I have not, I have not gotten more fumbles. So I like to leave this on balance. Zone drops. We're going to get into this a little bit later, but you can create different zone coverages with your different zone drops. Um, for example, and we're going to show you all this in a little bit here uh, in just a moment. But like I can drop these at different depths. So I could drop, and you notice that when I override these, and you actually want to take some notes on this. If you take a look here real quick. It says in the description, overrides the drop depth for hook curl, three rack hook, middle read, and vertical hook zones. Those are the four different yellow zones that you can put on your players. And those four different yellow zones, as a default, are going to play all differently. Meaning a hook zone plays differently than a vertical hook zone, which plays differently than a three rack hook zone, which plays differently than a middle read zone. Okay, So that's a teaching point and something we'll dive into here in just a little bit. The next thing is uh, curl flats. Overrides the drop depth for curl flat, quarter flat, and seam flat. This is the three different types of purple zones that are in the game. You can have a curl flat, you can have a quarter flat, or you can have a seam flat. Okay, those are the three. So proper defense and understanding the tools in your tool belt, you realize those are the three tools from the curl flat. Those are the five tools from the yellow zone. Okay, so um, typically these are gonna, I'm gonna start most games with these at default unless i i've actually shifted to that i was always dropping them in certain different drops but um i've actually shifted that a little bit um and then right here over uh zone drops flats to 30 overrides the drop depth for the hard flat cloud flat and soft squat zones now uh really quick i get a lot of questions about this so we're just going to show you this real quick so this is dollar and and really what the question has basically been is this a soft squat zone if i run a soft squat zone so you get soft squats from cover two sink if I run a soft squat zone, will the will the corner, and let's say I drop that soft squat to 30 yards, okay? Let's say I drop the soft squat to 30 yards. The theory is, okay, and it is a theory, the theory is that because he's in a soft squat, what we know about soft squats is if they just run a streak, 
Mike Evans will basically um, be the, the soft squat will match coverage. So let's take a look here. So I'm just running on my streak. So let me show you my play real quick on D. I have zero deep blues. In theory, if the soft squats would work, you would never need a deep blue, right? Because you could just run these, and they would match the coverage, and you'd be you'd be golden. So let's take a look at what happens. Thirty yard soft squat hard flex. You see that he does not match because of the because of the drop. Now you might say, well, you ran routes into him. Okay, we'll show you that as well. Um, if I just run, I'm going to max protect, and I'm going to run everything to the right here. So really what we're trying to dial in now is if you notice on that, it's, you see that soft squat zone. Um, and then all we're going to do here is we're going to maybe, th this would be an argument. So basically what you could do is get another underneath player, uh, another underneath coverage if you did something like this. So what you see, we just have the soft squat on the left, snap with the ball. And you see that he is not going to run. He does kind of run with him, but obviously it's an you know he's not going to run really well. Now, one of the things I want to show you is one of the adjustments that you have in your arsenal with your coverage adjustments. If you hit triangle or Y on Xbox, and you hit L1, which is sticks coverage, that is going to reset these zones to their default. What you should notice now is the 30 yard drops are no longer a thing and those soft squats should now follow the streaks let me just show you that and of course he didn't do it at all in fact what they did was they just dropped to the sticks okay they just dropped to the sticks now let me jump out of let me jump out of this and head back into the coaching adjustments to explain what is going on here so coaching adjustments if i go in here what you're going to notice right here now if you if you take a look here let me see where if you take a look at your, uh, you see here, these are all at 30. Now, um, if I go into, let me see. Now, let's say I go to, I want to show you three different types of uh, coverages. So the first one is uh, cover two press, which would be a, um, which would be a Tampa two. And we'll show you the differences in the two. And I want to explain why. Uh, you see a lot of you probably see a lot of pro players come out in uh, cover two sync or cover two style blitzes. Uh, most cover two style blitzes will bring out a soft squat uh, zone on those outside guys. Everything else is the same. So let me just show you. So right now I'm in cover two. You notice that they are in the, the outside corners on the outside are in cloud flats. The middle guys are in vertical hook to the mid read. If I shade coverage up, nothing changes as you see. If I shade coverage down. The only thing that changes is on the outside of the coverage, they go in the hard flats. If I shade them back up, you see they go back into cloud flats. So different shades can produce different zones sometimes. Um, let me show you cover three. So what you'll notice here is they're in curl flats. Now curl flat, and this is why you need to understand the peak zone of that category, meaning um, what is shaded. If I shade coverage down, what does it shade down to? If I shade coverage up, what does it shade up to? Well, for purple zones, if you shade coverage up, they always go to curl flat, right? Same thing for flats. Flat zones, if you shade coverage up, the max they're going to go to is a cloud flat. Now, if I shade coverage down, you're going to notice that it's going to put hard flats out on the field. And watch what happens if I shade coverage up. Now they go to cloud flats, okay? So you notice that little difference, and that is something, in my opinion, that's actually very significant in how these flat zones actually will play and how uh, what they will actually react to and what they won't. You'll notice here that I can put, um, I can put if I if I hot route uh, these slot corners. You notice that I have two different options. I can put them in a curl flat, or I can put them into a seam flat. Notice that these seam flats are different than a curl flat. Meaning, if I shade down out of a seam flat, they're still going to go to a hard flat. But notice, if I shade up, they're going into a curl flat. So as a general rule, when you put purples out there, I would recommend starting with the seam flat and then shading the coverage up. Shading coverage up from zone, and let me just show you what I mean by that. If I press coverage here on this outside, this is not shaded. He should press. He might not here. You see, there he goes, bail. Let me just show you, because of all the adjustments I did, let me show you um, shading and how it works within zones really quickly. So I'm in cover three sky press, meaning the corners are going to press on the outside. So what you'll see here is if I run Mike Evans on a streak, 
he is not going to get pressed at the snap of the ball. Even though the coverage presses, he's not going to get pressed, right? Now let me show you another thing. Now if I and the reason he's not going to get pressed, and these chucks, you'll notice sometimes um, players will get zones will get chucked, um, meaning if they run like let's say they run. Let's say you're in dollar three two six, and I'll show you an example here in just a second. But what we're gonna do is we're going to take our zone drops off, okay, for this next piece. So we're gonna put everything back to default, okay. And I just want to show you this. So coaching adjustments, we're gonna put everything back to default. You see that right there? They're all default. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out in dollar, and uh, just because I want to make sure I have access to a bunch of different zones, we're gonna come out in cover three cloud. Uh, we're going to put cover two sync in our audibles um, as opposed to cover two press. And I'll explain why when we're out there on the field. Uh, and then we're going to come out uh, in, let's see, cover three cloud. And then we want to make sure we have cover four drop. And then we're going to come out in any um, any zone blitz, three deep, three under zone blitz. Strong in the slant, edge blitz three, um, max sting three. You know, any of those, any of those pressures, uh, I actually particularly like Crossfire 3 the best. So we're going to go with that. Now what you'll notice out here is, and we're going to just come out in a spread set because I just want you to see what is going to happen. We're just going to come out in spread, and we're just going to come out in Y cross just so you get a good understanding of what's going on. So now I'm going to run cover 3 sky press. I'm going to man line, and I'm going to press coverage, right? I'm going to do that by hitting triangle R1, and I'm going to, triangle and hit down on the left stick that's going to press the coverage and you'll notice here that these guys on the outsides are in curl flags those curl flag zones watch what happens on the field you see that no there's an initial chuck or an initial initial press of the purple zone onto the streak let me show you that in instant replay these are the little things that are super super important to understand see that right there see the press inside the reason that that matters, the reason that that matters, let's say you're playing someone who likes to run spread. Let's say you're playing me. I like to run spread, right? You go cover three. Everyone and their mom that knows how to run spread is going to run four verticals against this defense. Watch the chuck. You see the chuck right there? Now it's a lot harder to hit that window. That little chuck by the curl flat zone makes it harder to hit the window. Now what you might ask, well, what about... Um, can you chuck them from uh, Tampa 2, right? Can't you press out of Tampa 2? Watch here. So these guys are now in soft squats. But what I'm going to do is just shade coverage up, and that's going to put them in the cloud flats, as you notice out there. The reason you want cover 2 sync is because it gives you the flexibility to have every, um, every, every kind of flat zone that you can want on those outside guys. That's, that's why I like to use cover 2 sync typically over uh, cover two because now at the snap of the ball at the line of scrimmage if you for example if you for some reason get a feel or get a re get a reason to believe that you're going to need to be into a soft squat um, because soft squats play differently than cloud flats then then you go to something like that but let me just show you cover two sink right and most of the time you're going to shade them into clouds watch what happens here snap of the ball and you notice that the shade coverage up because i shaded it up they don't press, okay? So that's just a little something. Now, if you're using zone drops, you use any zone drops at all, they're not going to press. But I do want to show you another thing here. Now, let me show you cover two sink. And this is cover two sink. It's just we're going to hot route those outside guys to cloud flats, okay, as opposed to shading them. Watch the difference. You see the press? And we'll show you this in instant replay. What's going to happen is a reroute press from the corners on the outside. So you see here on the inside, we didn't get any press. But on the outside, look, both receivers, both receivers get press, get an initial press. That gives those safeties time to get out on the ball. So critical, absolutely critical. Critical to understanding. So what you could do, all right, think this through. What you could do is you could do something like this. I could take those slot guys and throw them into hard flats. Now let's see what happens. Do they press? 
obviously they don't, but they shoot out to the flats, and now you have double flat protection if you were in a Mabel, uh, Mabel situation. So again, understanding the, the types of adjustments that you can make are absolutely critical. Now, one other thing that you can do is I could go and put these guys into seam flats, right? Uh, let's say I did something like this and put them in the seam flats. I'm going to get the reroutes and I'm going to get these purple zones. Watch what the purple, purple zones are going to do. They're going to match. Seam flats will match coverage as a general rule. They're going to match coverage. All right, now let me show you what's going to happen. Do the same thing here. We're going to put the reroute uh, zones out there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put um, we're going to put our outside slots here, outside our slot corners on curl flats. Watch the difference in the zone. Now they're going to press, reroute, and go into a zone. Completely different coverage, even though they're on the same, even though they're in the same color of zone on the field. Here's a seam flat, another example. So these are seam flats. I just want you to watch what's going to happen, and I also want you to watch what's going to happen with this three rec. And what we're going to do on these outside guys is. Uh, don't worry about the pressure. We're not getting we're not trying to get anybody free We're just trying to understand the coverages that you can run So let's say that I run let's just say that I run this the only difference is I'm going to take the running back and put him on the green ground. Okay, let's just say this thing Snap of the ball watch I want you to watch what's gonna happen with the corners Snap of the ball you notice they are in man-to-man -man coverage And we'll show you this in instant replay and then we're going to show you some route combinations um, that this is actually going to be effective against. So snap of the ball. What you're going to notice, take a look at this three rec. This three rec's in a hook zone, right? A yellow zone. He's showing coverage in the middle of the field. No, he's match coveraging the running back. He's match coveraging the running back. Look at this. You've got your outside guy. He's match coveraging the outside receiver. All right, in man. you got your inside guy who is... Um, Taking that cross, which he's getting destroyed by the cross, but he's taking it. And then you got your outside deep blues that are running off with the runoffs. Notice here. Notice this right here. This is critical. Watch this. He sits. This corner's coveraging. He's on it. Okay? That's a match coverage. Most of the time when you see um, a cover three zone blitz of any type, it doesn't matter if it's from dollar three two six, and we'll show you this when we jump into the three to five in a second. What you'll notice is those zone coverages, seam flats, are man-to-man. -man. Now, if I shade it up, watch what happens. You see here there's no press. Why is there no press? Because I shaded the coverage up. However, it did create a new zone. Okay? So that's what I mean about the match coverage concepts. Now, what, what you'll also notice with this is let's say I take this um, – I'm just going to do a route combination, like something that I would do if I was in this spread set right here. This is a route combination I would do. I'm going to drag both of these guys. I'm going to take Mike Evans and put him on a post, and I'm going to take LaShawn McCoy and put him on a shoot flat. This is a little simple route combo, right? very simple. And I want you to watch what happens from this specific zone in this route combination. It's snap of the ball, and what you'll notice is some interesting things that will occur. And we'll show you this in this instant replay. And we'll show you why this matters when we head over to Bunch here in just a second. Match coverage until they break inside. Right? Match coverage until they break inside. And you see the switch offs. See the coverages right here? Part of this is because those routes are not on vertical stems. Let me show you what I mean. When I mean vertical stems, I mean they take a step forward. They're on drag routes. They're just crisscrossing. So the routes don't run with them. But now I want to show you, this is just the same coverage, right? Two in routes. See that? Completely different coverage. Completely different coverage. It basically turns into cover three match. You throw an in route out there on the field, and it turns into cover three match from this look. Watch. Even follows the post route on the left. See that? Okay. He's going to follow him all the way down the field. So why would why does any of this matter? Well, it matters because it's going to change how you defend and call certain plays against certain route combos. Okay? So we're going to jump over to gun bunch. Double post. 
Mm-hmm. And on defense, we are going to use um, – we're going to put the cover four in our audibles. We're going to put the cover three sky in our audibles. Just for the video's sake, we're going to put cover three cloud in there. And then we're also going to put in um, loop crash two because it's a cover two zone blitz, meaning those zones are going to be soft squats on the outside. And then we're going to use the um, – any type of 3 deep 3 under blitz as a base play, I personally think that FS middle 3 is the best because you have two of those zones plus the safety comes down for run support. Okay, I'm going to jump in right here. And this is the base front that you're going to see. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to base align and press coverage. This is going to kind of keep everything cleaned up. And what you'll notice on this play, let's say I run a standard... Um, a, any standard flood, right? I'm just going to run a standard flood. So this is a basic flood right here, right? This is very basic flood, okay? Watch how the defenders are going to defend this. All right. Now, this is going to explain. Let me just real quick before we jump over there. I want to show you these are seam flat zones. Seam flat zones. Now, if I go to cover four drop, you see they're quarter flat zones. Completely different. And uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. But uh, I want to show you the instant replay on this play right here. So watch what happens on the field. So I'm running a basic flood. Watch how the defenders defend it. Notice this first thing. You're going to have a press coverage on this outside because we press coverage, right? He's going to press and run him out, run him in man-to-man. -man. All the way up until this point, he pretty much goes with him, as you can see here. Uh, at this point, he's getting sacked, so the play's over. Okay? So that, that one little concept right there can turn this left side into match coverage, as you can see. There's match across their board. Now, what about over here? Um, what you're going to notice is the running back because the, the, remember that seam to flat, right? So this linebacker on the right, uh, or on the left right here is playing seam to flat. So if there's any streak route that comes, he runs with the streak. If there's not a streak route, he goes to the flat. So there's not a streak route right here, right? So then he's going to the flat. Look at who he's looking at. See how he's looking at that outside wide receiver? And then as soon as the running back flat route comes into a, into a step, he now looks to the running back. Look at that. See that coverage right there? That's explaining that. That's what's going on. Now over here, let's take a look at what happens. You see there's no press from this receiver. He is um, coming out. Now look at who he's looking at, running backwards. And he's basically running with that flood, con or that flood which he should, running with the streak. Now this is where things get interesting. Here you see you get a you get a press. Look at this this guy right here. This middle linebacker is on a three wreck. Three wreck hook takes this underneath flat. Interesting. The safety is on a blitz, I think. So he's blitzing. Yep, he's blitzing. Notice this this route right here. Seam to flat. Seam to flat. Okay, seam to flat. What that means is he's playing the streak. And then he's going as soon as a flat zone comes, he's going there. So because of the tight end flat zone or flat route, it pulls him in that direction, meaning the corner route's going to be wide open. Okay? We'll show you this again. Now, why this matters? Why this matters? A lot of people, when they try to run a cover three flood, they don't quite understand why their corner routes are getting picked off if they run it from the outside receiver. So we're going to run the same little play. Now, to make this coverage really, really good against Bunch, all you have to do is take L1 and put him in a curl flat. That one adjustment is going to change how everything plays. The three red hook, and I don't necessarily understand the exact terminology for the three red hook and be able to explain it, he is going to kind of do a lot of different things, and sometimes it's hard to explain why he's doing what he's doing. But watch what's going to happen here. Here I'm going to run the flood. So I'm going to run that, and I'm going to run that on that side. Very simple, and I'm going to motion this out. This is a standard cover three beater. You're going to see this all over the place. Okay? You see this You see this everywhere. 
Now let me show you an instant replay of what's going on. So right here, what you're going to notice, same thing should be a, true of the left side. You see, we're take, you know, this guy's playing, um, this guy, this this left side is pretty much box. There's nothing really open on the left side. Seam flat does a good job. Over on this side, the seam flat once again shoots to the flat as soon as a flat zone comes available in that area. Now notice right here, you see this three rec shifts back. Once the three rec recognizes that there are there are two flat zones on that right. Right, the safety curl flat. He's gonna come back. He's gonna come back into the middle of the field. He's basically, if there's no one over here, if there's no one crossing in the middle, then he'll stay where he's at. Now watch this. This outside corner, outside third and match coverage. He runs a corner route. Corner route. Notice that this outside third, as he's backpedaling, once he makes his break right there, you see that he's gonna crash down on the corner route leaving this streak i can outside pass lead that against that safety and get open okay so that's why cover three match um and this match coverage is not always a, a great idea okay now let me show you one other let me show you another coverage that you can do you can actually do multiple principles within a coverage so what i could do is i could play match on one side Right, because we've seen the left side's pretty much taken away with this coverage. So I'm going to play match on one side, and then what you're going to notice is I'm going to play. I'm going to throw this outside guy, outside corner Davis in a deep half, and I'm going to put this guy over here in a curl flat. I still have my three wreck, and now I want you to watch how the defense is going to fare against this very popular uh, route combination. Okay, so there it is, and uh, we're going to go into instant replay and take a look at what's going on. Okay, so instant replay, as you can see here, um, we'll zoom out a little bit. What you'll notice is on this left side, you see that they still play match coverage. You notice that? They still play match coverage on this left side. See, he's going to run his corner C route. There's the press animation. Um, and it's a press bail animation, really nice little trail coverage technique, as you can see on that side. So they're playing cover three match on the left. Now on the right, what we're doing is we're playing a kind of cover three match. You'll see here, we still get that zone. You see, we get that reroute right there from that slot. That reroute is actually a big deal for those one play touchdown guys. That reroute is actually a big deal. So now what you can see is we are now in essentially a you know we, we've got this we've got the zone chuck right there and then he's shooting to the flat to take care of the tight end now, obviously you can hit the tight end for a quick pass and do fine um, but you'll notice he does get out there on that tight end next thing you'll notice this guy in that curl flat we've hot right into him he's gonna sit right over here in this area just like he's supposed to and then what we did was we put this outside corner on a deep half so so really we're playing kind of a cover three um, or uh, cover two inverted Mabel coverage on the right side with two flat zones, uh, two, two uh, curl flat zones. And you'll notice that this deep half is going to run with that streak, so there's no window to throw that. Match coverage, guys. Match coverage. So now, in our arsenal, we have different tools to be able to stop this very popular concept. Now, I do want to show you one thing out of this flood um, flood concept really quickly I just want to, just so that you can see it and understand it we're gonna throw that tight end on a post route and we're gonna leave this um, this running back on a little uh, curl just want you to see this so we're gonna run our match coverage on the right or on the left and then we're gonna run that cover three Mabel um, or cover two invert Mabel on the on the uh, right side there you see and I'm gonna put that guy in a deep half right there okay pass commit and watch how this is gonna play you see the snap throw of the tight end is wide open and I can get out there because of the chuck. Because of the fact that he chucked him in zone, so that's what leads to that. So, you know, if you don't want that to happen, if you don't want the chuck to happen, what you could do, or another option that you could do, is take L1, and what you'll see is I can take L1 and I can put him on a curl flat. Now what I can do is I can shade coverage down so that they go into hard flats and then I just need to basically re-put my seam flats out there 
with hot routes. Okay, fairly fairly simple. Uh, on the right, you can't do it on the left, unfortunately. And you'll notice that this is going to change how the coverage is going to play. But what you'll also notice is if they try to run a flood concept on that left, now that hard flat is going to shoot out there and make a tackle. Notice this post is taken away from match coverage. This post is taken away from match coverage. Pretty much anything they want to do on the left side of the field is taken away because of match coverage. Interesting, isn't it? How you can combine these different coverage schemes into one coverage to really help you um, be able to lock people up. That's what I'm talking about when I say understanding the tools in your tool belt. Uh, this is by far the most um, the most extensive thing on match coverage you're going to find. Because we'll, Take a look here. Watch the three wreck. You see that now that the offense is running something over the middle, the three wreck is taking that. Right? See that? Now they're running something over the middle of the field. Something like a crossing route or a drag route. So what we've learned is three wreck hooks, as a general rule, will do fairly good and fairly well against underneath patterns like crossing routes, or not, I'm sorry, drag routes, in routes, zig routes, stuff like that. That's what a three wreck's going to guard. That's what a three wreck's going to guard. Okay? So let's move, keep moving along here. And, and obviously you notice the match coverage on the right. You notice the hard flat coverage and the seam flat coverage on the, on the right as well. Um, and then you probably notice that, I just said that match coverage over the top of that safety. So what an offense might once suffice, once suffice uh, and this is where match coverage I think is interesting. Uh, one might suffice that a good strategy to beat this would just be to, oh, I'm just going to run Mike Evans on a streak. And let me show you what's going to happen. So I'm just going to run him on a streak. And you notice that the corner, it's only in match coverage that I have seen this, the corner can actually recover on the ball when you play match coverage. When you play match coverage, um, you'll it, it, it's interesting. I, I have not seen it work out of other coverages. But basically, I'm going to max protect, literally just trying to just trying to get this route to Mike Evans. Um, or really either one of these guys. And watch what's going to happen here on the left. Back up, throw a bomb, and notice it's just not there. There's just no window to throw it. Now, part of it's a speed deal. And what you'll notice on the on the right side, and this is why, again, this is a specific defense for a specific formation, and that's very important to understand. If you run this defense against Bunch, one of the things I want you to notice really, really, really quickly here in instant replay. Whoops. Dang it, I did not mean to do that. Um, instant replay here. And let me just show you what's happening. On this left side, watch. He presses and he covers him. Okay? Press coverage. Watch what happens on the right side, though. There's no press coverage, and he gets burned by about four yards. Interesting. Why is that happening? It's primarily because he was motioned out from a bunch set. So what you'll notice now is if I just take um, Scotty Miller and I put Scotty Miller on a streak. Let's just say I do that. Reset the play. We're going to man line. We're going to press. Watch the right side of the field. See, he doesn't press again. It's because it's because of where the receivers are on the field. It's because of their placement and their positioning. All of these things take into effect. So when you're labbing defense, do understand it's a lot more than just having a money blitz. It's a lot. It's a lot more than just having a money blitz. Okay. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to flip the sides back. So I apologize for that delay. But this is why the de this is why defensive the defensive guide that we have is even though you know you can understand the blitzing concepts and I can share with you blitzing concepts all day, you still can't stop anybody because you don't understand why the coverages do what they do. And that's to me that's really, really important. Okay? And there's obviously a ton of detail that we can continue to go into, but just a basic understanding. So understand that if they're like coming out in um, bunch, on one side of the field it's a compression formation which means match coverage plays completely different. And on the other side of the field, it's a spread formation, which means match coverage plays completely different. As a general rule, based on what I have learned about this game, I think that match coverage against spread does fairly well. Match coverage against compression does not do well. So those are some principles to keep in mind. With Bunch, what I would do is I would run match coverage on the, on the, on the um, solo receiver side, and then I would run zone coverage, basic flood Mabel coverage, 
on that other side, I want to show you an, another quick thing really quick. So three rec hooks, understanding what three rec hooks do. And we'll have a video that kind of goes in depth and explains a little bit more about what exactly the zones do. But I just want you to see a three rec and why three recs are so good. So let's say I wanted to run, let's say I wanted to run a slant round to Chris Godwin. And let's say I run a zig, you know, this is a very popular concept right here. Something like this. This is a very popular setup for this play. Watch what's going to happen. Just watch the slant. See that right there? It doesn't look like much occurred, but a lot occurred. Okay? And let's look at it. The three rec is, again, recognizing anything underneath over the middle of the field. So what you'll notice right here, he is going to jump out at this um, slant route. Now, once the slant route crosses the middle of the field, you see he kind of lets him go. But a lot of people, like, that's a snap. If he tries to snap throw that, that's an interception. All right? Now, notice what you can do is you can kind of build off of this. So, so what I might want to do, okay, is I might want to put my um, corner, my slot corner, on a three rec hook. And this is where the big tip to me of the day comes from. If I want to put my, my slot corner on a three rec hook, you notice that when I try to hot route him, they can put him on a seam flat, a hard flat, a curl flat, vertical hook, man coverage, QB spy, blitz, or bluff blitz. Those are my options. The one we're going to key in on is the bluff blitz. Now, when you ever, whenever you bluff blitz someone, make sure you pass commit. You do that by hitting an R1, flicking the right stick out. Watch what he goes on now. You see here he's on a seam flat. The reason he's on a seam flat is because of the, the, the cover three coverage that you're running. But if I audible to cover two, you'll notice he's now on a three rack if I put him on that bluff blitz. That's, that's interesting. What about cover four then? What does he go on then? Should be a quarter flat, right? Right? Uh, let me analyze that. See that right there? He's going on a quarter flat. What about a cover three cloud, right? Cover three cloud. Let me see what it goes on now. Here, he, if, you, if you put him on his own, he's going on a curl flat, okay? He's going on a curl flat, as you can see. Notice the differences? So that, that is why understanding these coverages, um, like in cover three, right? So right, cover three right here. He's on a hook curl. What's he going to go to when I put him on a bluff blitz? A curl flat because of the coverage, right? Because of the discipline of the coverage. However, with the defense, you'll notice a lot of times you put any defensive lineman on a um, three rec, and most of the time he's going to be in a, he's going to be coming into a, a, a three rec zone. You'll see here, three rec zone, three rec zone, three rec zone. That's how you can get these zones, okay? Even though you can't hot route them in a vertical hook situation. Most of the time, the linebackers are going to be on hook curls. What do you do if you bluff blitz? Oftentimes, they're going to the flat, as you can see. They're going to be on hard flats. Um, now, what if they're in, let's say, let's say they're in cover two. What do they go on then? Well, they go to hard flats, okay? Kind of a standard... Um, Kind of a standard deal. I think it's just because that's honestly, you can't bluff blitz linebackers, okay? You can't bluff blitz linebackers. You can only bluff blitz slot corners. Now, let's say I go down into 335 wide, and I just want to show you this. Um, this outside backer, you can bluff blitz him because he's in a blitzing perspective. And you notice I can bluff blitz that outside linebacker and get an additional three rec when I'm in camper two. What about cover three buzz, you ask? You'll notice he's still in a three rec. Okay, interesting. Why? Because he's a lineman technically. Okay, so all of those things play into it. And, and, and my encouragement to you is to understand that. So like, for, for example, if I want to play bunch defense, a great, a great bunch defense would be bluff blitz that linebacker. You've got the curl flat there. You've got this deep half on the outside, right? Something like this. And then you've got Sean Murphy bundling in a, uh, in a bluff blitz dump and curl flat. And you have something like this going on, and you're going to be fairly solid. Um, your outside third, I would recommend putting him either into an outside quarter or just manning him up. Um, 
nanny him up. But you notice on the outside, I can put him in an outside outside third, deep half, outside quarter. Those are the three primary coverages that I'm going to be able to put him into. Um, I can also put him into a soft squat. I can put him into a cloud flat. I can put him into a, a hard flat, right, depending on what I want to do on that outside. Um, for example, if I want to play some match coverage, you know, I might want to run something like this. And what you'll notice is that soft squat does a pretty dang good job on C-routes. It does a pretty good, day, pretty good dang job. Another thing you want to notice, and this is, again, all of this, all of this is just for bunch. The level of detail that you can get into with this stuff is insane. But what I want to show you really quickly, this is a, a good example of a coverage defense that you can run um, that's pretty, pretty good. Uh, we're going to go to nickel 335 wide. And what we're going to do is we're going to bluff blitz that outside linebacker so that we get the three rec. As you can see here, we've got three rec there. And then we're going to basically throw our middle linebacker here into a deep middle third. Um, and then from there, our slot corner is in a vert hook. If we bluff blitz him, you see that he's going to go into, a, he's still going to go into a vert hook, right, as you can see. So something like this right here. And now you'll notice you got your vert hook, you got your three rec, you got two man pressure. And then on the outside, this is where it gets interesting. Then on the outside, what I can do is I can double flat the right. So I might take, um, I might take my, my outside, um, my outside corner and throw him into a uh, deep half zone and then I might take my outside uh, safety and throw him into a curl flat zone and then I might take that lineman and throw him into into something as well or if I re hot route um, if I re hot route my slot you see I could put him into a hard flat so you have different adjustments you can run now on the back side of this I could take my uh, slot corner, or I'm sorry, not my slot corner, but my outside corner, put him in a soft squat, and I could put my outside linebacker on the right side into a bluff blitz vert hook. You see, now you can get that from both sides from nickel 335 wide. I could also put him into a hard flat so that he takes away anything from the running back. Now, as a, as a you know, offensive coordinator on the other side of the ball, watch what's going to happen if I run just basic post route combinations different things like that watch this soft squat you see the soft squats not going to play the post see that the soft squat is only going to play outside breaking patterns to the left side of the screen he's not going to play inside breaking patterns interesting something to note so anyway the reason i wanted to do this video today is i wanted to give you kind of an in-depth look into um how you can really start to build your own coverage schemes how you can build and understand what the zones do because part of playing good defense in Madden is understanding, number one, how you can get beat. Number two, what your zones are going to do and how they're going to play. And then number three, what adjustments you can make to stop certain things that people are going to do. For example, what adjustments can I make to stop a crossing route? I could put a three rec there. I could vert hook. I could bluff blitz. I, there's all sorts of things that you can do. I could zone drop people. You know, there's a lot of different options. My encouragement to you today is to get in practice mode and to learn some of these things. And if you don't want to learn them, just pick up the book. Pick up the ebook. It has everything in there that you can uh, imagine on defense and understanding it. But part of playing really, really good defense in Madden, at least just from my estimation, is really understanding and having a plan for the coverages you're going to run. Because what most people do is they come out, they pick, all right, I'm going to run cover two, then I'm going to run cover four, then I'm going to run cover three, and then I'm going to run cover two man. And I don't know the difference between any of those coverages. They just look differently, and I'm trying to mix it up on my opponent. And that's what I see a lot online. I actually just played against it. My encouragement to you with this is understand, spend time practicing with it. Understand what routes work against what, right? Uh, what coverages, what zones, and what they don't work against. For example, if they, like, understand this right here. Like, here's, here's a concept for you. What if you did this? And this is, I know this is crazy, and I know it makes no sense, but just humor me. What if out of cover two from bunch, what if I play just soft squat, just this, just this coverage right here? What if I just did this? Right? What if I just did that coverage that I'm just showing you right here? I got the middle linebacker in a deep middle third. I got the left side guy in man-up coverage on the back. What if I did that? And just see how it plays. And, and, and it might get roasted. In practice mode, it's okay if you get burned. Right? But does the soft squat take him? You see, he doesn't because we have a flat zone. Or we have they, they have a flat route. 
So if they have a flat route, the soft squat won't take him. Or if they don't have a flat route, then the soft squat probably will take him. So different things, right? Different understanding those things. Those are just, like, to me, so critical um, for, for your defense. But when you can understand that, like, to me, this is – to me, this is like a decent defense on that side of the field. And then what you can do with this guy is you can inside quarter him. Why would you inside quarter him? Because he's going to play the streak better. He's going to play the streak better if it's an inside quarter versus a middle third. Interesting, right? So that those are things that, again, those are, those are things that are really, really effective for your defense and understanding things. Now you'll notice the soft squat, once again, doesn't follow. It doesn't matter if you have double flats, three flats, four flats, five flats, six. It's not going to matter. He's not going to follow it. Now, what if he's, okay, so there's that, and, and we can just continue to run through the gauntlet here. But now, okay, let me check my adjustments. What if I put him in a cloud flat? Then what does that mean? And I and I ran something like this right here, right? You know, essentially, this is kind of a, and I'm not saying it's a good bunch defense. I'm just saying this is something you might try out, um, and you'll, know, you'll be interested. You see the cloud flat doesn't follow. So nothing on that side follows. Um, if there's a flat zone ran by the running back, they're always going to jump and squat on the flat. Okay, So that's why when you're running bunch, now you know on the offensive side of the ball, I should run a lot of flat routes to my running back. Why? Because it's going to help with some of the adjustments that they might do. Okay, So anyways, that is um, a pretty in-depth tutorial. Uh, we'll have more on the way. I want to know what you guys think about this video. Does this help? Um, is this something that you want to see more of, more broken down? I was thinking of doing a series where literally we talk about exactly what a hook curl does, exactly what a three rec does, exactly what a vert hook does, so that you can kind of understand those things. Um, because to me, um, what is a hook curl versus a vert hook? What are the differences between the two? Um, what do zone drops do for you? You know, all of those things. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be as helpful to you as I can on defense. So this is a little bit of a tutorial on how to um, how to basically understand what your zones do, why they do what they do, and then leverage them to create different coverages within different zone uh, options that you have on the defensive side of the ball. I want to thank you for watching today's video. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd highly encourage you to subscribe. we got a lot of content on the way. Um, we will have two more videos out today on YouTube, one at 6, one at 8. And then um, I am working vigorously on my New England guide, uh, and that should be done by the end of the weekend. So thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions about any of this, my number, my cell phone number is in the description. Just shoot me a text message uh, and ask me your question. I'd love to, love to hear from you. And then also, if you haven't already joined our text message membership, you can do that as well. Um, just text the same number in the description. That's my, that's my personal cell phone number. It's 812-216-3644. But uh, just shoot me a text. Let me know you want to receive the text message membership videos. And those videos are, uh, we've got six of them out, but those are like super, super in-depth, um, about an hour long each of them are. And they go through like full, full ba basically full ebooks, but um, without the write-ups, so the video-based guides. But it's like split close pads, trips tied in, gun bunch, um, all of those. we got Big Nickel over G in there, all that fun stuff. So, Anyways, I want to thank you so much for your support, and we will see you guys in our live stream tonight. We'll be streaming on YouTube at 10 o'clock p.m. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, that link is in the description, and we always let our Discord members know whenever we go live. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you on tonight's stream at 10 o'clock.